So here we have the new studio display. I wanted to unbox it, show you what you get in the box, show you first impressions of the display. On the front, we have a large graphic with a wallpaper that Apple have obviously implemented. We have the side profile on the side, of course. We have some studio text up here on the top. And then around this side, oh, we just have another side profile. <laughs> okay. Um, on top, we also have the fabric handle that I feel like is actually becoming quite common that we're seeing across other products, other Apple products. Okay, so I've just turned it around so that we can see the back. We have the Apple logo, of course. Then we have the one Thunderbolt port that you use to connect up to your Mac. We have three USB-C ports. And then we also have the actual sort of power adapter connector thing. And that looks quite different. That doesn't look like something I've seen before. I wonder if it's similar to the 24-inch iMac. Once I unbox it, we'll know. But yeah, that is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, let's get into actually unboxing and seeing what it's like. That is quite satisfying. So I did have to lay it flat to get inside. Oh, okay, um, that should be fine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let me get the camera so you guys can see. So inside we can see some text for the studio display. And then if we, we can like pull it aside like this, pull it open. And then I'm actually gonna have to put it on the floor and then put the display on the desk. So let me do that. Okay, so it's actually lighter than I expected. It is quite light and it's actually thin as well. It is very thin. This one also comes with the pre-built stand, I think. Um, it doesn't come with the sort of like pro stand where it goes up and down. It's just a standard stand, it looks like, where it just swivels or tilts. Um, tilting is, is pretty good, it's pretty okay, but yeah, you can't adjust the height. Um, but yeah, let's actually peel this off, shall we? Okay, so one thing I nearly forgot to show is that there is like a backpack <laughs> on the back of the screen. Okay, so we've got it off, there we go. And it looks like, is it is it like pre-attached or something? Can he not disconnect it? I'm not actually sure. Okay, so yeah, that just contained the power cable um, in this backpack sort of thing. It should just come off the side. Yeah, it does. And then we can lift off the top. Very good, very nice. And then finally, the next satisfying part, which is peeling off the screen protector. Oh, Oof. yeah. I don't know if you guys can see them, but the bezels on this display definitely are thicker than the bezels on the Pro Display XDR, but it's still a blimmin' good looking monitor. Yeah, that is an incredibly good looking monitor. Incredibly good looking. You can see the side profile. It's not the thinnest thing in the world, but it's pretty thin, I'd say. We have some vents on the top for cooling, I assume. We also have, if it will focus, can I get it to focus? Yes, I can. We also have all of the sensors and the webcam built in there. I also wanted to have another quick look at the power cord, the power situation. I'm just thinking, does this come out? I don't think it does. Yeah, I, th I think that is just, attached in there that's not coming out that is connected for good because i don't want to force it i don't want to break it either i don't want to rip anything so yeah i think that's connected for good maybe i could i could be proven wrong but yeah that's not that's not changing that's not moving we can also see the thunderbolt port and those three usb-c ports the back of it is very clean looking very minimalistic there's literally nothing on the back other than the apple logo and the and the ports and then we can see the, the hinge, the tilting hinge that it has built in. Um, yeah, we can't disconnect this, but the power cable is a nice power cable. It's a braided, I think it's not black. It's more sort of like a midnight color. If you look at my, I don't know if you guys can see, but my, my top that I'm wearing is black. And then the cable is definitely not completely black. I'm hoping it shows on camera so you guys can see, but um, it's still pretty nice. Another thing which I nearly forgot to show is that there is this box that comes in the studio display box um, and it just contains the documentation and also the Thunderbolt cables that you can connect up your Mac. But yeah, nothing else in the box.
I've been using the studio display for around a week now. And yeah, it's been interesting. I feel like there's a lot to discuss with this monitor, especially with the features it has, the price it goes for. And finally, obviously Apple have released a new monitor other than the Pro Display XDR, which is clearly targeted at professionals. This is more sort of targeted at consumers, even with the price. But yeah, been using it for the past week. Here's my experience. So we'll first start with the specs. The pseudo display has a 27 inch 5K resolution display. It's capable of 600 nits of brightness. It has one Thunderbolt port for connecting up to your Mac, three USB-C ports for peripherals, a webcam at the top, including an ambient light sensor for auto brightness, which is a seriously underrated feature in my opinion. Built-in speakers in the bottom, and there's even an A13 Bionic chip in the monitor, which powers the webcam, spatial audio, and other features like Siri. To connect the display to your Mac, you have to use the one Thunderbolt port on the back. For Mac users, this is great, as this is the only cable you need. It can provide both data and power, 96 watts of power. The three other USB-C ports are your standard 10 gigabits per second ports, which I could see myself using for things Things like external hard drives. The display is glass as standard, but for an extra $300, you can get the nano texture glass. The nano texture is better for very bright rooms, but I personally prefer the standard glass. It's surprising how few glass monitors that are out there when looking at the competition. Glass panels are noticeably contrasty compared to matte panels, and I think most people would actually prefer them. When purchasing the display, you can choose from the standard tilting stand or a visa mount option. However, you have to decide at purchase. You can't purchase it with the tilting stand expecting to change it to a visa mount in the future. There is also the option of upgrading the stand to a tilt and height adjustable one for an extra $400. It's pretty much the same $990 $99 Pro stand that you can buy for the Pro Display XDR. Is it worth the money going for the tilt and height adjustable stand? I personally wouldn't. I think you're actually better off going for the V-Smart option and then buying a high-end monitor arm, which will give you a ton more adjustability. When it comes to the design of the studio display, I absolutely love it. I think it looks awesome. It follows the design of the old Thunderbolt display, which I think remains one of the best looking displays. The studio display is essentially an updated version of that. The black bezels, but silver stand and exterior case really give it a good contrast. The bezels are pretty big though, and this is clearly a design choice by Apple, as I'm sure they could have made the bezels super thin if they wanted to. When compared, you can see how much thinner they are on the Pro Display XDR. The display itself is also pretty thin looking and very sleek when set up. Being made from aluminum, it also feels and looks much more premium compared to most other displays, which are typically made from plastic. I really do like the overall design and aesthetic of the studio display. The screen itself has a resolution of 5120 by 2880, and at 27 inches, that means it has 218 pixels per inch. I've been an LG 5K Ultrafine user for years now, and the main reason I choose it over standard 4K displays is purely for that 5K resolution. The display is scaling a 2560 by 1440 image, which makes everything very sharp. To get the same sharpness on a 4K 27 inch display, you need to set the scale at 1920 by 1080, losing valuable screen estate. If you're someone who does any design work in apps like Figma, you'll notice a difference right away. Something I am surprised at though, is that there is no 120 Hz promotion. And considering we see it on the MacBook, the iPad and the iPhone, yeah, I'm not sure why we don't see it here. But at the same time, I'm not really too fussed. I'm happy with 60 Hz. Obviously it would be nice to have 120 Hz, but when it comes to day-to-day -to -day use, 120 Hz, I feel like the only time I'd need that is when I'm gaming. Obviously it makes the animations and stuff smoother, but I'm not gonna be gaming on this display anyway. There are six speakers in the studio display and the speakers in this thing are actually really, really good. They're probably the best built-in monitor speakers I've ever heard. I could see a lot of people being completely happy with the sound that comes from these. The only thing they're lacking is bass, which is to be expected considering there is no dedicated external sub. Are they going to replace proper desktop speakers? Definitely not, but I was impressed. So here is a quick test of the webcam, the 12 megapixel webcam that they've taken from the iPad and they've put in here. And it's being processed by the A13 chip. So basically the image processing and everything is handled by that. You can also see what the microphone quality is like. I think the webcam is pretty good, especially for one that's built into a display. I'm not really expecting much, but I think it's good enough definitely for video calls and things like that. And I think the microphone as well is, is good enough. Again, you're not going to be a dedicated microphone, but considering the webcam and the microphone is built into the monitor, 
I'd say it's pretty good. The studio display is a fantastic monitor and it will be replacing my LG 5K Ultrafine going forward. I love the design of it and having a built-in webcam whilst also being tightly integrated with the Mac makes it a very convenient monitor. It's a unique monitor in the features and functionality it has, but you are paying a premium for it. For $1,600, it is quite a bit of money. It also doesn't seem to really be disrupting the market like the Pro Display XDR did. The Pro Display XDR is sure very expensive, but it was competing against monitors which are tens of thousands of dollars. It just made that market a lot more accessible. The studio display seems to be going the other way where it's a bit more expensive compared to other 4K displays. For most people, a 4K display will be completely fine. A 4K display that I'm using for my gaming setup is the Eve Spectrum, which does 4K 144 Hertz, and it also cost me $800. So it's basically half the price of the studio display. Are you getting double the value by going for the studio display? I don't think so. So who is it really for? I think if you're set on having a 5K resolution display, you're a Mac user, you would benefit from a webcam speakers and everything else that comes with the studio display, then there really isn't anything else like it. I also wanted to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN is a super easy to use one click VPN service that lets you access content you otherwise might not have access to. Say you use services like Netflix or Prime Video, you'd be able to change the country, and access content you otherwise wouldn't be able to access. Another benefit is getting access to games that might not be available in your own country. Again, you can use NordVPN to get those games. You could even get discounts that otherwise aren't available in your region. NordVPN doesn't throttle bandwidth either. It encrypts all of your traffic so your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speeds. It also supports every major platform including macOS, iOS, Windows, Android and many others. NordVPN also has a feature called threat protection that will protect you from malicious websites, malware and trackers when browsing the web. So make sure to check out NordVPN and use my link in the description below, NordVPN slash OlioVPN. You can try it risk-free, 30-day money-back guarantee, no issues. Make sure to check it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the studio display. Make sure to let me know your thoughts about the studio display, the price, the design, anything you can think of in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.